You are watching the Michigan Football Report. We are going to dive into some major, big time, juicy recruiting buzz following the commitment of Jaden Davis on this live show on Friday. Kind of looking forward to 2025. Heck, one of the top one, two, three players in the country for next year may be majorly influenced by Davis's commitment. Then, we're going to talk some rumors coming out of the spring game. What did we see? What do we know now that Michigan's 2023 spring practice has concluded? But, do you want to give you guys this challenge? Uh, it's always tough to get new subscribers for a show like ours in the offseason. College football does not have a much of an you know, offseason storyline. The casual fan doesn't really dive in. But, we kind of had a nice jump on Monday. Uh, the show we put on Monday had 59 people subscribe, which is a little bit above average for an off-season show. So my challenge to you, if you're a new viewer and you like what you see today, subscribe. Can we beat the 59 subscribers that we gained from Monday's show? That's my challenge to you to help us grow during the off-season. The second challenge on that is if you've already subscribed, you know the link. It's youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Send it to a friend. Put it on Facebook. Send it to your group text of Michigan football fanatics. We are going to dive into those stories and more. Let's go. I am your host, James Yoder, the self-appointed king of Michigan football media, the host of the Michigan Football Report. We are going to jump into the latest news and rumors around Jim Harbaugh's program. It's it's truly the offseason. It's the second offseason, right? Uh, January through March is the first offseason, then you get spring practice. Now, nothing's really going to happen officially until this program jumps back in the field the first week of August. So there's a lot of speculation, a lot of rumors, a lot of recruiting chatter. And the biggest story out there, the thing I'm most interested in about, is the number two player as of now in the 24-7 sports composite for the 2025 recruiting class. I'm not talking Bryce Underwood, baby. I am talking, what are the odds of this? Now, I knew he was a player, but like, you know, sometimes you just don't really put a bunch of stock into certain high schools until you get the big commitment from Jaden Davis. Then you kind of start thinking pipeline, and it starts to come to reality now that, uh, you know, Jaden Davis has committed. The number two player in the 2025 class, the kids who will be juniors in high school this fall, he is Jaden Davis's left tackle. Now, one service has him as the number one overall player, but could this Providence Day to Ann Arbor pipeline become a thing? We're going to dive deep into that. But I want to ask you guys this question. Knowing what we know now, Michigan has 11 commitments, or 10 commitments, which is a jack, 10, 11 commitments, uh, 10 commitments right now in the 2024 class after Jaden Davis on Friday. Will this class finish a top five ranking when the rankings are all said and done uh, coming up about you know, 10 months from now in February? Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. The best offensive lineman in the 2025 class is David Sanders out of Providence Day, Charlotte, North Carolina. He pro uh, protected Jaden Davis's backside blitz this fall. Now, he missed his freshman year, most of his freshman year. He played in a couple games with a knee injury, visited Georgia, Notre Dame, and Miami so far this spring. He's got offers from everybody, folks, but most notably the big boys, Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson, dozens of offers, but of note, Michigan was his first offer, which makes time and space just warp my mind. Offered him summer of 2021. That's not that long ago. That was just like a couple months ago, right? Yeah, let me remember like 18, 20 months ago. The summer before his ninth grade year. So coming out of his eighth grade year in spring of 2021, pew, Michigan offered him. And uh, he was slated to start as a true freshman in 2021, got injured, and then played with Jaden Davis in 2022. Davis, a junior that season last fall, and of course, Saunders was a sophomore. Here's what he has to say. Uh, I just took a bunch of quotes out there. I found them kind of com can you compartmentalize into one for your uh, liking. He says, I got my uh, first offer my eighth grade summer from Michigan. That was the fir my first offer, obviously. That's always going to be at the top of the list for sure. I always liked Michigan growing up anyways, and now with his high school quarterback, the guys who's, you know, but he needs to protect Jane Davis at Michigan. Jaden Davis leading the charge to Ann Arbor. We've got a couple teammates that could commit with him in this 2024 class. If all those guys end up in Ann Arbor, uh, Davis, two wide receivers, could their offensive lineman teammate. But how? what kind of program is this, right? Providence State might have an, an absolutely absurd program this fall with three players potentially in the offense going to Michigan in 2024 and then their offensive lineman, Sanders, being maybe the best player in the 2025 recruiting class. Guys, are you tired of struggling with bad habits? 
Cold turkey might be great for sandwiches, but there's a better way to break free from those pesky habits and it doesn't have to involve weird mind voodoo or other bizarre tactics. Introducing our sponsor, Fume, an innovative award-nominated device that helps you kick bad habits to curb uh, to the curb by focusing on the good parts. Fume is all about embracing the natural. It's not electronic, and instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Best of all, it's free of harmful chemicals and packed with delicious, all-natural flavors. The adjustable airflow dial and movable parts and magnets make it perfect for fidgeting, which can, which can help alleviate stress and anxiety while you break your habit. I wasn't sure what to expect at first, but I was pleasantly surprised by the taste, feel, and look of fume. Breaking a habit can be tough, but with Fume, it's easy, enjoyable, and even fun. With over 100,000 customers and countless success stories, there's no reason you can't be next. Start your journey towards a healthier lifestyle with a journey pack from Fume. Visit tryfume.com slash chatsports and use code chatsports for 10% off when you purchase the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com slash chatsports. And don't forget to use the code chatsports, no spaces, for 10% off your order. The link is down in the comments and in the description. Guys, I'm fuming. I've been fuming for about three months now. Never been a smoker, but it's a great taste going down, and it really does make you think about other things. If you're a guy who bites your nails or has other bad habits, just take this bad boy, spin it, open it up. You got fume. I've got uh, the maple pepper in there right now. Try fume.com slash chat sports. Let's get back to the Jaden Davis, the Providence State Pipeline. Is he leading the charge to Ann Arbor? Um, he put out a lot of quotes out there, talked to a few media members over the weekend. So capturing the quotes here that he said on his high school teammate, David Sanders, from Jaden Davis. He says, if I get him up there to Michigan, of course, I'll never have to worry. And they're kind of talking about, you know, if he gets him up there, we have to worry about getting sacked, right? He also went to Sanders. You could put Chase, Chase Young from Ohio State now with the commanders uh, on the field, and uh, Sanders would be able to block him. He goes on saying, that's my dude. I love everything about him and his family. I love Big Big Dave, who apparently is his father, who himself is six foot eight, And then Big Dave Sanders, the high school sophomore, is my dog, and he's going to be my teammate. You heard it right there, going to be my teammate. I like what I hear. I like what I hear, right? If uh, Jaden Davis can bring his five-star number one, number two player in the country offensive lineman teammate to Ann Arbor, that's one of the best package deals that Michigan football has ever had. Here's where he is right by the different services. A five-star, the number one overall player by the 24-7 sports rankings, right? Now, the composite has him number two, ranking these all together. Rivals has him as a five-star, number two overall. On three, whatever to them. Uh, they just seem to hate Providence Day, apparently, because they rank Jaden Davis pretty low, too. Number six, ESPN doesn't even do recruiting anymore, probably, because they don't have a 2025 class rank ranking out. And the newly formed, the most respected, unbiased rankings in the game, the JY365. They've got him ranked so high, they can only deem him as Michigan worthy. That's kind of the highest praise you can get. Uh, some people say that's about a seven star right there, but we're just calling it Michigan worthy for now. So David Sanders, number one, number two prospect in the 2025 class. Ah, I'm liking what I'm hearing if one or more of his teammates uh, decide to commit and then ultimately enroll in Michigan over the next few or next year or so. I'm pretty excited about this 2024 recruiting class, but really recruiting in general, right? 2025 is off to a pretty good start. And with guys like David Sanders, uh, in the pipeline, it could be an all-time two-year run, 24 and then 25. Scale it 1 through 10. I'm at like a 9.9 .9 right now, um, how excited I am for Michigan football recruiting. Let me know what you guys are thinking down in the comments. Uh, we alluded to this uh, a little while back last week, beginning of last week. Would his high school teammates, would they follow? Now, um, they had a four-star top 150 corner in the 2023 class from Providence Day that I think a lot of people thought might end up in Michigan. It didn't end up coming. But Jordan Ship, top 400 player, right in the cusp between three stars and four star by pretty much every service, number 391 overall. He's seen as the better playmaker, a little bit better size, 6'2", versus the Michigan legacy, Channing Goodwin. Now, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but Channing Goodwin's dad, uh, Jonathan Goodwin, Michigan football offensive lineman in the mid-90s, one time uh, you know, NFL pro bowler uh, in the NFL you know, 15 or so, 20 years ago. He is the offensive line coach there at Providence Day. So he is the guy who works with David Sanders on a daily basis. His son, Channing Goodwin, will be a senior in high school this fall. A borderline four-star, just kind of slightly ranked below uh, where his teammate is there. He's a three-star wide receiver, number 494 overall. 
All right, we are going to dive into the 2024 class. Jake, I think that might be my take. I see the word diving in too much. So you got to almost, you got to buzz me. I got to wear one of these buzzers. If I say diving in, like we were teasing our, our teammate who says let's go a lot, um, I might, might be diving. But uh, I'll, I'll jump into, I'll, uh, it's the same word. Uh, I will review the 2024 class rankings as of today here in a moment, but did want to give you guys an update and thank you so much. We told you last week, um, once a month, Chat Sports does these subscriber battles. You get pitted against one or two channels to see whose audience can kind of bring the thunder, you know, or get some recognition at team meetings, etc. We were matched up against the scoundrels from Ohio, uh, state of Ohio, the Cleveland Browns and the Browns Report, and then the newly launched, uh, relaunched Alabama Football Report. You guys all heard what I said about the uh, people who live in Alabama and you know who they marry. Uh, we crushed them. You guys came through big time. Browns finished with 159 new subscribers last week. Alabama, 133. And us here at the Michigan Football Report, helped by the Jaden Davis live show. But nevertheless, the numbers count. We had 244. So bravo to you guys. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't. Um, let's get 60 subscribers today. So send that link to a friend. Here's the recruiting rankings. These are updated as of 6 p.m., 5.30 p.m. Eastern time on uh, here on Wednesday. Georgia still number one in class, LSU number two. That's been pretty consistent over the last month or two. Michigan, they had dropped out, you know, a little while back, a week and a half. Notre Dame had popped up there. But Michigan and Notre Dame are, are in Michigan and Ohio State are in absolute heaters right now. The Buckeyes just got a five-star, another five-star pretty much every year. They get one uh, wide receiver. Uh, this week, yesterday, and Michigan with Jaden Davis. Ten commitments to the Wolverines, eight for Ohio State. That is your top ten, kind of rounding out South Carolina, Pitt, North Carolina. I don't expect any of those teams to be top ten classes when it's all in, but with six, ten, and nine commitments now, that is your top ten classes as of April 5th. You guys might have saw last week we pushed this a little bit, uh, launched our new, relaunched our Instagram uh, account and uh, went from zero to 189 subscribers in a matter of a week. And haven't really talked about this week much. I don't think I've posted since the weekend, but we're going to be putting a ton of stuff on there all off season long. I'll start putting some exclusive content, some inside scoop that I'm not going to put on YouTube or Twitter just because it'll be a smaller audience. It'll be people just coming from this show. So uh, when we hear some buzz, I'll try and put that on Instagram first when we have the opportunity. So follow us over there. Links down in the comments in the description, but it's just at Michigan Football Report. Talk about some spring football standouts, right? We watched the spring game. I'm not going to lie. It was kind of boring, but I watched it two or three times just to make sure I wasn't missing anything, focusing on the offensive line, defensive line, et cetera. Peyton Leary. Now, Jim Harbaugh's praised him in the past. He got uh, a scholarship for the spring. Not sure if he'll be able to keep it, if Michigan will be over the, the limit or not. But he had himself a hell of a day uh, on Saturday for the spring game. It's probably the best player overall. That's why I've got him as number one. Six catches, 121 yards, and absolutely abused Amari and Walker, which is why, if you guys saw last Friday's show, um, I'd have been hearing the last week or so down the stretch of practice that Walker, that kind of hype and athleticism, had died down a little bit as Michigan's offense started to try and game plan. Well, look, look, he's making plays here and there. We can exploit him like this. And that's what they did in the spring game. Um, the Michigan offensive coaching staff on O'Leary's team knew that, hey, if we get him in one-on-one -on -one coverage against Amari and Walker, uh, O'Leary, who's former walk-on, I don't think he's going to be a player here this year, you guys, but he made a hell of a bunch of plays, six catches, 121 yards, and abused Amari and Walker, which is not a good sign when you kind of think about what Michigan's secondary looks like outside of Will Johnson and Mike Sanders still at the three cornerback positions. Number two stand out. I thought his arm looked great. I thought he looked like he was having fun. The team respected him. The the uh, the offense respected him. The coaching staff uh, was was you know kind of letting him do whatever he wanted out there. And it looked like it was the JJ McCarthy show. I think guys, I think that JJ McCarthy is on the cusp of being a national name. And I'm not just talking about diehard recruiting fans. Um, he's got the look. He's got that kind of you know California surfer kid style hair. He has fun. He's got a great personality. Uh, he's got just unique things, right? Of course, people say, well, yeah, his dad was was uh, rubbing up against his girlfriend at the bowl game. We're not talking about that, that kind of national notoriety. Uh, he's got the smiley face branded clothing and hats and everything like that. He's meditating before games. And if Michigan opens up uh, the passing game, even just a little bit, you were talking about kind of uh, Tim Tebow, Johnny Manziel, not the bad side of Manziel, the, uh, the fame level. Even going back, Matt Liner, I think, Later on this fall, and if he stays around for 2024, we might have a J.J. McCarthy mania around college football. Speaking of McCarthy, let's ask you guys this question. How many touchdown passes will he have this fall? Um, really kind of start to turn it on, right? 
um, three touchdowns against Ohio State, passing, one rushing, uh, a couple against Purdue, three more against TCU, and really went from like, what, 14, 15 up to 23 over just those last few games. Uh, Michigan's record for a single season is 25. It's one of the lowest in, in all major college football. Uh, but let me know how many of you guys think JG will have this fall. I'm going to go 31, but I could be wrong because they're going to give the ball inside the 5, inside the 10 to Blake Corman down whenever it's all day. So that might hurt McCarthy. But I hope Michigan uh, doesn't pull them in the middle of the second quarter like they did in a bunch of games last season. How about this guy, Benjamin Hall? I'm not going to lie. Um, I was very concerned that this was you know, one of the two players that Michigan recruited at the running back position this past fall. Um, was the third string running back on his high school team. Now, they are a powerhouse. The two guys in front of him are D1 level running backs themselves. Um, one who's a year younger than him, I think is committed to Clemson. The other one is uh, you know, a senior as well, going you know, to be a freshman this, this coming fall. So um, a lot of talent. So maybe that's not the worst thing in the world. And you know, some rumors that he got benched for performance or you know, just attitude at certain times as the starter in game one. By the fourth game, he was a third stringer. But Benjamin Hall showed out, had a nice 33 or so yard touchdown run where he waited, waited, kind of cut it, cut outside and went all the way to the end zone. Uh, 13 carries, 96 yards and a touchdown for the true freshman running back. Still should be in high school, but he made a hell of a claim, uh, you know, with C.J. Stokes and others to be that third running back behind Blake Corum, Diamond Edwards, and hell, maybe he puts himself in a position to be the starting running back in Michigan in 2024, which would be his true sophomore season. A.J. Barner, the starting tight end from Indiana last year, transferred over to Michigan. He worked with Mike Hart when Hart was over there back in 2020, 2019. Uh, had himself a nice game. Now, I don't think he's going to um, you know, take the starting job from Colson Loveland, but I do think Michigan is going to get him on the field like he is a starter. I think, you know, on, on the linebacker side of things, it's very similar. Michigan's got four guys for two positions who are starter level, have started other schools like Ernest Hausman or the Kyle Green was a starter before missing last season. Of course, Mike Barrett, Junior Colson, tight end as well. A.J. Barner, three catches, 30 yards, caught a touchdown from Alex Orgy. Jack, you know what the thing is. It's an Orgy in the end zone. Orgy, uh, you know, a little Orgy pass to A.J. Barner, the tight end. And uh, I think he's just proving, look, I've said it all offseason, really, since Michigan lost to TCU. What I like about this team is I think maybe outside of quarterback, maybe outside of quarterback, you could take the second stringers from Michigan this season, and you've got yourself a top 25 team, right? Def defense, 100%. Offense, maybe wide receiver, they'll be a little thin. I don't know if Jaden Davis, I'm sorry, I'll Davis. I don't know if uh, Davis Warren or anybody else is good enough to be a top 25 player at quarterback. But other than that, offensive line, running back, of course, and at the tight end position with A.J. Barner, I think Michigan's second stringers could be a legit top 25 team. Last but not least is Raheem Anderson. Um, one of the under-talked-about uh, players that might make an impact this, uh, this fall, he was slated to be the starting center after Olu Olatimi came here for the one season. He went on to the NFL. Uh, he won all the awards last year, was an All-American level player. Anderson got probably more reps this spring than he had anticipated because Michigan kind of recruited over him with Drake Nugent, the starting center from Stanford. But Nugent didn't play on Saturday, right? Neither did his fellow Stanford transfer, uh, Miles Hinton. Other guys who were out, just so we all know, uh, uh, Blake Corum, Diamond Edwards, Will Johnson, Junior Colson didn't play. But um, I thought Raheem Anderson played really well. And he has maybe jumped on this opportunity that we, we recruited this guy, Drake Nugent. He's going to be slated to be the starter for a year, maybe two. Um, could Raheem Anderson you know, make an impact here? Could he be a guy who has more playing time than expected? It certainly didn't hurt uh, getting rave reviews. And from watching the film, go back and watch it. Um, I think it was, what, number 62 was his roster number. Just kind of look at the offensive line, see him playing over there. He didn't really give up any pressure at all on the interior. And uh, if he keeps playing like that, gets a little stronger this offseason, maybe he unseats Nugent or others for a starting role on Michigan's offensive line. Guys, that is the show today. We will be back with more content. We are going to be ready. Michigan has a uh, potential commitment coming on Friday. Andrew Sprague, top 200 player in the country, offensive lineman uh, out of Kansas City, Missouri, is going to commit live on Instagram on Friday. We will get content for you, either a live show or put a video out on demand uh, as soon as he makes that commitment. So make sure you subscribe to the show, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Thank you.